Good morning and welcome to the Full Bloom Garden Tour at Homestead by Design. Well, I guess this is Full Bloom. The stuff that I weed and seed there's stuff all over the place that is still coming up that's nowhere near blooming yet the uh, flax is already gone uh, lupines already gone ton of stuff already gone but I guess this is about as close to a full bloom as there is little lambs quarters there so let's walk through it. It's 5.30 in the morning. I'm trying to walk through this and show I haven't even seen a lot of this stuff. So I want to get through here and take a look before the sun starts blasting down. We're going to have real hot weather today and I need to get into the vineyard and spray for bugs. Got a little bit of Japanese beetles down there I want to knock down. Unfortunately, I did not get in here while we had the company here, and this is what happened here. And the ground's cracking here. I got uh, lilies planted here. This is coleus, and that looks bizarre. That's going to look beautiful when it when it finally gets out. But I really have to get in here soon, like as soon as I'm done spraying in the vineyard and get this stuff watered before it's dead. The zinnias are popping like crazy in there. Let's walk around there. Here again is a, a weed and seed area. This is all grass and weeds and yanked them out, threw seeds on the ground, threw some peat on top of the seed and watered it every day until it started coming up and now it's on its own and I'll have flowers till likely the end of summer into fall there. Zinnias are looking good. Yeah, looking real good. And got a couple sunflowers in there that came up from seed that's been in the ground for a while. Pepper trying to trying to beat the zinnias for the sun and some massive tomatoes I gotta build proper cages uh, next year maybe make them out of rebar or something or a re uh, the rebar mesh another weed and seed area but it does have some weeds in it I'll have to get in here and weed there too Let's show the top here. That looks like a hollyhock, but I can't say for sure. I think it is. Oh, got lots of lamb's quarters up top here, and it looks like a pigweed right in the middle. I'll just step right in there, pull, pull whatever I can reach out, and be done with it. Yeah, I got a weed here, too. I've had to kind of neglect this because we had people right there on the pad for the last five days and it's been very hot so I haven't been able to get a lot of stuff done again so I'll have to get in here hopefully today because this is overgrown but the vineyard needs my attention more than that So that is the toilet garden there. The lilies that I transplanted, the old school lilies, they're all starting to bloom. And in front of that is just junk. It is literally just junk. I planted zinnias there and then we had a huge storm that washed everything out. And a couple of the zinnias came up. Here is my little blue stem prairie grass. This is the test batch, and I have test batch 
patches for other grasses as well so that I can see what they look like when they're at different stages of their life. Uh, the prairie grass is the most important because it's a it's an odd grass and I have to weed non-prairie grass around it so I want to know what the hell it looks like. But this doesn't seem to be doing it as good as the stuff in the ground which is that away and we'll go take a look at it along the tour. My wife's Gerber Daisy is finally doing okay, but it has yet to flower. Just tons and tons of flowers in here. This area right here, I always throw seed on there, and everything that grows here is miniature because it's pure gravel. There's no, no soil whatsoever underneath it. You can see the little coreopsis and all the other flowers. Everything that's along here is right here, but it grows in miniature. We had the road. The road was redone over the weekend. Or no, no, it was done, uh, it was done Monday. Sunflower. That, that was part of the wildflower, annual wildflower seed. Just crazy amount of stuff there. Got some yellow uh, lilies in the back. This ton of Asiatic lilies here. I'm not real wild about either of the colors, but they were cheap. You know, get everything at the end of season on sale. But as far as the wildflowers go, they are blooming like crazy. Got a little poppy going. That was a weed and seed area right there. But it doesn't look like it took all that well. And it doesn't look like they're active right now. But during the day, there are just tons of monarchs in here. This is the milkweed section, which is eventually going to be moved. We're going to make a bigger, dedicated place for them, but not right in front of the house. Or make this area in front of the house smaller and still have a dedicated area. We're thinking about up on the other side of the barn, there's a large triangle there, which is where I got the seed from to start with there's already some growing there so if i um, contain the competition they will take over that area as well i don't know what this stuff is but it's i have another one right there that it's already six feet tall i'm not real i'm not really liking it so i think i might yank that today as well a quick look at the gem corn. The tomatoes, I don't know, they're, they're a little wilty on the bottom, these particular tomatoes, but they seem to be doing fine on the top. Got some carrots in here. This garden was kind of impromptu. I just threw it in so that it didn't end up being a weed patch. Uh, this year, I plan on doing the gardening in earnest next year. I'm going to put in some containers here as well as over there all the way up to my blueberries on the other side there. Kohlrabi, which was given to me by the, the guy at the greenhouse. It uh, Apparently, the bugs like it. I've never even had kohlrabi, I don't think. The rhubarb is way past its prime. Let's see what we got in here. I haven't been in here in ages either. There's some grapes there. That grapes up here. Um, not a lot for the amount of greenery on this thing. And I really should hedge this too. This is just getting insane. 
I have to hedge the vineyard today. Oh, actually, I'm not going to hedge it today. I, what I'm going to do is get in there and spot spray the Japanese beetles, then go through with a quick spray on all the tops of the vines, which is where they, they start at the top and work their way down. So I want to knock them down. And I'm going to do it with just seven, no uh, fungicide or anything else. It's going to rain tomorrow and rain for about five days. So tomorrow evening, so a day and a half with the seven on there. And then I will hedge the vineyard after that. Another big uh, sunflower. Got lots of bees. That's a native bee. We don't have any honeybees here, or almost none, which are an invasive species. We have dozens of different types of native honeybees, though, which are quite welcome. Oh, there's a hollyhock. We planted yellow hollyhocks way up by the barn um, ages ago, um, 12, 13 years ago. And they pop up here and there every year. We've, we've never replanted them. They just show up here and there. Another sunflower. This is uh, waiting for the sun to come up. It's pointing in the direction of the sun. It's pretty cool how sunflowers uh, uh, will do that. Senescence, I believe, is what it's called. The uh, grapevines do the same thing but they do it with their leaves. They turn all of their leaves towards the sun. So if I go down there early, most of the leaves are facing the sunset. It takes them a while to turn, turn back. So just tons of flowers. And these are growing in, you know, this is gravel. This is the road. It, the gravel goes over, and it doesn't turn to uh, pure dirt. Well, in nowhere is it pure dirt except for on the other side. This is all varying degrees of gravel. And it's almost pure gravel near the road here, but there is clay underneath it. So it takes them a while to send their roots down there. But once they get down there, they do quite well. And get one hell of a, a ditch garden going. Okay, I don't think I need to do the, uh, the back side of this garden. I'll come and show the Lake Mont. It's either Lake Mont or Mars, but I believe it's Lake Mont. We got grapes here and there, all over in here. Not sure if they're gonna if they're gonna make it all the way, but we'll see. This is the best the vines ever looked. It's kind of a sickly variety. The upper grapes, um, these are hybrids, and they need hedging as well. Not quite as bad as the ones in the vineyard. Well, this one sure does. They need to be cut off uh, right below the bottom catch wire, which in this case is a, a pole. And they need to be hedged at the top. And this has some Japanese beetle damage, but like in the vineyard, it's, it's not heavy. But I really want to keep the population down and not have it do a lot of breeding and building up for next year. There's enough there where I, I want to knock them down. Here is my little blue stem prairie grass. This is the same thing that was growing in that, uh, in that planter way back there. I actually get in and weed this stuff. And I water it three times a day because it's incredibly hot lately. It's doing quite well, but 
the weeds are doing pretty well too. Late season grass, trying to grow grass here. Um, I can't kill the weeds until the grass is up and a bit longer. This wasn't planted very long ago. So, got some, some coming up here, but as soon as this is about four inches long, I'll, after the first cutting sometime, I will come in here and spray this with 2,4-D. A little planting there. This is the pet cemetery. I still got a couple plants to plant over in some of the other graves. Speaking of pets, we are, well, we're going to foster a stray cat. We got to go pick it up at 10, so I have to get my my spraying done in the vineyard by 10 o'clock and then run to, what is it, Kettle Hollow. I need to run to Kettle Hollow and pick up a cat. Hopefully we can find a nice home for it. We got enough damn animals. So we'll take a quick look at the, oh, wait a second. Um, you can kind of see an outline where I stopped um, spreading seeds. I did it in a patch coming all the way up to this rock as wide as I could toss. So that front part and this part down here were seeded a bit later. Um, I misjudged how much, either how much I was throwing or, or how much seed it was going to take. So... I ordered more seed from Roundstone and uh, told them of my dilemma that I needed to get it in as fast as possible. And they got the order to me damn near immediately. But we do have some little blue stem coming up here and there throughout this area too. Okay, here in the vineyard you can see it's overgrown like crazy. I'm kind of rushing to get down here. What I'm going to do is spot spray these guys. They appear to be sleeping. Spot spray them with, I'm going to mix up a gallon of spray and just walk through up and down the aisles and spray the ones I see. And then I'm going to come through and give it a dusting uh, mostly on the tops and the extremities a little bit. Wherever I see damage, I'm going to get in and spray and knock these guys down. Uh, what else? Oh, a little bird nest here. I I saw it last time I was in here, but I don't think there's an actual bird that's using it. I think it was made and then abandoned. It's very, very tiny. Here's my hand. Not sure what kind of bird it is. It's not a hummingbird, but it's some pretty tiny bird. Wood wrens are really small like that, but I'm not sure if that's a wood wren or not. Hopefully I can see some of these beetles when I come through here. But when I do, I'm going to, as soon as I'm done with this, uh, taping. I'm going to run back, mix up a batch of uh, seven, two batches of seven, one in a solo backpack sprayer and one in a one gallon, there's one right there, one in a one gallon uh, sprayer and then I'll come back down here with the gator, get this sprayed as quick as possible, then yeah, there's another one right there. Yeah, there are quite a bit of them. Then I got to get showered up and go out and rescue a cat. Yeah, look at the size of these grapes. I, I thought I had uh, pruned them all out. Hopefully I can find somebody who wants to make wine out of them this year. There's not enough to 
sell. But if somebody is interested in coming in and picking them at the end of the year, just let me know and they're yours. Okay, I guess there's one more thing down through the end. I need to get those tied as well today, if at all possible, but I don't think it'll happen. Um, this area here I've been clearing. This is our, our border runs through here, and that's our mystery neighbors back there. We haven't, nobody's heard from them this entire year, so it's kind of odd. They built that place and then just kind of fell off the, fell off the map. This area here, I'm, I'm going to clear it all the way up to the road and kill all the grass in here. I had started this a couple of years ago uh, when I put in these uh, chestnut trees. I had a row planted and the chestnuts just don't do well in Wisconsin. So not sure if, if this is gonna make it or not. I gotta, I gotta put a bigger cage on this. But I'm going to plant prairie grass and, well, uh, prairie flowers and, and grass here and put some trees in. I'm going to put a couple of uh, burr oaks in here. And then you may have seen this in earlier videos, but... I've been clearing through here, and this is the north pasture right here that's going to be a savanna-like pasture. We're going to try savanna grasses and hopefully some burr oaks and stuff in there as well and see if you can graze horses in an oak savanna. It'll be an interesting experiment. So I killed the trees around these um, let me see what they are. You can see them pretty good now. They're either red oak or they're black oak, but I do believe this is, this is a red oak. And that's probably a black oak back there. But anyway, I got to get in here, take out the rest of these trees. I don't want to expose the view of this shed all that much. So hopefully the big blue stem will hide that. I had thought for a while I would plant bushes down here, but now we're pretty much going full bore with an oak savanna restoration. It's one of the most endangered habitats, or it is the most endangered habitat in the United States, I believe. Could be wrong on that, but it's actually one of the most endangered habitats in the world, more endangered than the rainforest. So we're doing our part for Mother Earth as well. Seven beetles within three leaves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, seven beetles. Dead now, but oh, there's another one up there. Yeah, these really need to be knocked down. Okay, so what I did in the end here, let me see if I can find a spot. I mixed up some seven, which is carbaryl, and I just came in here and spot sprayed wherever I saw a group of beetles or a beetle, I just gave it a little spritz. So I used way less um, seven than I normally would, but it's normally mixed in with a, a full spray of fungicide or something else. But it doesn't really need the fungicide right now. So I think I'll just continue to do that until I do my next fungicide spray. And if there's still Japanese beetles, 
then I will mix it in with that spray. But I don't think there will be. Um, there was probably, oh, I don't know, maybe 50 beetles. See, like here was some. They're on the ground now, dead. Um, so just a little spritz here, a little spritz there. And that knocked them out. So once I get this hedged, there's going to be a lot less place for them to hide. And I'll just do it again. I think that'll, that'll take care of the Japanese beetles for this year. And I'm not going to be able to hedge until after the rain, which is coming in two days, and it's going to last like four days. I'll probably get in here a little bit here and there. It's not like I have to hedge the whole thing at once. So, uh, Japanese beetles are pretty much blasted for now. And, oh, there's one right there. This one I will smush. Ooh, and there is a dragonfly. See, I do not want to kill these guys. They kill a lot of gnats and black flies. And that's a big help for us. So, yeah, I'll continue to spot spray and just crush the little buggers. Okay, that'll wrap up this garden walk slash killing of the Japanese beetles. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Uh, give us a like if you do like us. And click on the little notification bell so that you're notified when we upload new videos. Thanks for watching and have yourself a great day.